In the world of aviation, fuel is king. For the majority of airlines, it is their biggest single expenditure. In 2019, it's equated to an average of 24% of an airline's total operating costs. United States air carriers alone burn through two to five billion dollars worth of jet fuel every month. So for airlines, it's very simple. If you can reduce the amount of fuel you use, you can maximize your profits. For an aircraft to reduce its fuel consumption, it must fly in the most economical manner possible. And that means flying at the most efficient speed and altitude. This optimally efficient speed and altitude is primarily affected by one thing, aircraft weight. The heavier the aircraft, the more fuel it will burn per mile flown. And if we return to our previous equation, the more fuel we burn, the less profit we make. To aircraft manufacturers, weight reduction is a seemingly never-ending Sisyphean task. And traditionally, it is the designers, engineers and scientists we look towards to provide ingenious weight-saving solutions. New minimalist structural designs, new lean manufacturing processes and new lightweight alloys, composites and polymers. In this constant striving for weight efficiency, giant developments have been made. From the fuselage, engines and landing gear, to the toilets, drinks trolleys and seat back entertainment systems. Compared to 40 years ago, today's single aisle jets can carry the same size load, the same distance on roughly half the fuel. These weight-reducing advances are celebrated wonders of our technological age that have trickled down to our everyday lives. But it's the lesser-known, low-tech, more, shall we say, analogue weight-reduction methods and tactics airlines employ that we are going to look at today. Such as paint. Aircrafts across the board are painted white. Why? Because white paint has less pigment in it and is therefore slightly lighter than coloured paint. When painting something as large as a plane, this really counts. As at this scale, the difference between white and coloured paint can be about 550 kilos, 1,212 pounds, equivalent to the weight of eight passengers. Across an airline's fleet, this extra weight from a coloured paint would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars per year in added fuel. And it is these small weight savings that when applied across a fleet of aircraft and millions of flight hours can lead to huge savings even if it is a seemingly insignificant weight loss. Like when American Airlines saved one single ounce, 28 grams, on their in-flight magazine by switching to a lighter paper. Indeed, a seemingly insignificant weight reduction. But when you multiply that single ounce across every one of their thousands of seats on every plane in their fleet, cutting out that one ounce saved them $417,000 per year in fuel costs. American Airlines again saved $173,000 worth of fuel when they looked at their onboard salads and decided to remove a single olive from them. Sticking with food, Delta Airlines saved a staggering half a million dollars by simply cutting their limes thinner into 16 slices instead of 10, meaning they needed fewer per flight. And ice? You will be lucky to ever find more than a single cube of it in your drink. Although as a passenger, you might not notice a slightly thinner paper, slimmer slice of lime in your drink, or an olive missing from your meal. In the last few years, with profit margins getting tighter and tighter, more ways have been sought to reduce weight. Tactics have been employed that you will or may already have noticed, like the removal of free snacks that not only save the airline money in not buying them in the first place, they then save again on the extra fuel needed to haul them about or putting an end to onboard duty-free sales. Since stopping, Delta Airlines have saved 1.4 million gallons of fuel per year, easily dwarfing any profits they were making from onboard sales. Or quite worryingly, Air Canada, who have saved weight in a place that you would only notice if there was a catastrophe. They have been given special permission to replace life jackets from their flights with lighter, less substantial flotation devices as long as that particular flight doesn't go more than 50 miles offshore. I don't know about you, but 50 miles seems quite a long way for a rescue boat to travel when you're bobbing about in the sea with something classed as a less substantial flotation device. Airlines are also scrutinizing the items you bring on board. Every item a passenger brings on board the plane brings a fuel cost with it. Over a year, the fuel cost for each laptop brought on board equates to $138. A mobile phone, $12. Neck pillow, $20. When you put a dollar figure next to every item on board, 
It's no wonder why airlines are so strict with baggage allowances and helps us to understand why the airline industry's poster child for customer satisfaction, Ryanair, has recently removed all baggage allowance from their standard tickets. Each carry-on bag costing $450 in fuel costs across the year, it's easy to see why other budget carriers are following suit. So, with the plane as light as possible, along with everything the airline has put in it optimised for weight, and customers being charged to cover every ounce and kilogram they bring on board, that leaves only one thing left, you. Japan's Nippon Airlines trialled encouraging passengers to use the restroom before boarding the plane to empty their bladders and reduce overall passenger weight. Again, not much per passenger, but a half full bladder is about 200 millilitres, seven ounces. And on a plane of 300 people, that equates to 60 kilos, 132 pounds, or one extra passenger a potential annual fuel saving of over $3,000 per plane. What's next? Offering free haircuts before we get on board. And it's not just the weight in our bladders airlines are looking at. As humans, we come in all shapes and sizes, but with the global population getting heavier year on year, there is a debate on whether airlines should start charging ticket prices determined by overall passenger weight. If you think about buying vegetables, you buy them by weight because of the very fact they do come in all shapes and sizes. Or when you want to post something by airmail, its fee is decided solely by size and weight. To help visualize why airlines are exploring this, let's look at an imaginary example. Two Airbus A319s are flying from Shanghai to Tokyo for the Olympics this year, hopefully. On board plane A is Ricardo Blas Jr a judo competitor from Guam who weighs 218 kilos, 480 pounds. And on plane B is Yadan Hu from China, who competes in the 10 meter diving competition. She weighs just 36 kilos or 79 pounds. On this flight of just over 1,000 miles, 1,760 kilometers, Ricardo would burn 118 kilos, 160 pounds of fuel costing $82, whereas Yadan will burn 20 kilos, 44 pounds of fuel, costing just $14. Yet they both paid the airline the same price for the ticket. With the current ticket pricing model, airlines are covering the extra fuel costs of heavy passengers. And as we have learnt, airlines do not like unexpected extra costs. This is something that Uzbekistan Airways and Samoa Air have decided to do something about. Samoa and her neighbouring South Pacific islands have some of the world's highest obesity rates. This has prompted Samoa Air to start charging passengers by weight. When booking tickets, passengers have to submit their weight, including their luggage, in order to calculate their total fare. This policy has come in for a lot of criticism. However, Samoa Air defend their pay-for-what-you-weigh scheme with Samoa Air's then chief executive Chris Langton saying charging by weight was the fairest method. People have always travelled on the basis of their seat, but as many airline operators know, airlines don't run on seats, they run on weight. So, looking towards the future, would you prefer to stick with the current pricing structure, or would you prefer airlines to move towards a pricing structure based on your total travelling weight? Is it fair that regardless of personal weight, we all have the same luggage allowance. Would this be a fairer way for airlines to calculate ticket prices, where lighter people would pay a cheaper price? Or should we keep the egalitarian system we have? All seats are equal regardless of your shape or size. Is it completely wrong to charge someone an extra fat tax, as it has been dubbed, because of their life choices or genetics? Should someone genetically taller, something completely out of their control, pay more for the same service than someone genetically shorter? Should women, who are typically lighter than men on average, be charged less? This is a debate that won't be going away anytime soon, and is picking up traction with mainstream airlines. Ryanair, for example, after having attempted already to save fuel by asking their flight staff to watch their weight, with the motivation of appearing in the annual Ryanair charity calendar, are now looking towards introducing a similar pricing policy to Samoa Air, where heavier passengers will have to pay an excess charge. I feel it is only a matter of time before this policy becomes a reality, and as we have seen with their baggage allowance policy, anything Ryanair do, the rest tend to follow.
Thanks for watching this episode of Behind Designs. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe.